Hello everyone. So today we'll be looking at a parametric surface and how to actually create this using curves inside Rhinoceros. Now we are utilizing Grasshopper to actually create the parametric portion of the surfaces as well as the curves that actually control these surfaces. So as you can see, if I just change the seed values, my surface changes accordingly. Similarly, I can also change the height of my surface. I can also change the bottom as well as the top curves that actually define this surface. We'll also be looking at a few of the lines that can actually be drawn in between these curves. So as you can see over here, these lines can also be something that can be controlled. And in a follow-up video, we'll also be looking at how we can actually animate this entire model. So let's begin. Starting with a fresh canvas. Now I'm going into vector tab. Over here, you'll find a construct point. I have the default set to the origin. I'm happy with that, so I'll let that be. Next, I need multiple points along the Y direction. Therefore, I will move my element. The geometry that I want to move. And I want to move it in the Y direction. Therefore, unit Y. As the translation vector. Now, we need multiple copies of them and not just a singular one. Therefore, I'll get a series command. And you can already see that there are 10. 10 is the default value, which you can also change. And you can also change the step value for it. So I'll keep the step as 5 and maybe the count as 15. Now you can see I have 15 points with 5 as the spacing in between. Now, we also have to start moving these points in the x direction, that is the minus x direction, that is towards my left, and towards the positive x direction, towards the right. For that, I'll again use another move component. This time, I'll also want to move it along random directions in the x axis. So, getting my unit x. You can already see that they're moving by one element. For this, I will get a random component. This randomized component will allow me to actually move my elements in different variations. For that, I'll also have to set a domain and a range. I will construct a domain from minus 5 to plus 5. Also get in a negative component. And I'll use this as my range. So I'm moving from a minus 5 to a plus 5. From here, we'll also need to make sure that the movement is along the same number of them. Right now, the locally defined number will be just 1. For that, I will take the same number of elements that we have as the number for the randomization. And you can see it's already starting to appear. Let's switch off the movement in the Y direction. All right. So once this is done, I will also set a seed value of something of a higher degree, let's say 15 as the seed value. And you can see as the seed changes, my curve also will change. That is, the curve that will be going through these points that we have actually created on the screen will now be changing. I will set the seed value or something like this and I will let that be. Similarly, since we have all of the same numbers actually being attached to the randomized component as well as the series, as we change the number of components that we require, you can see the curve can also increase or the points that control the curve can also increase in size. 
Next, we will have to make sure that I have a similar set of points at a distance x from itself in the z direction. For that, I will again use another move component. And I am taking the input as the initial set of points that we have actually created. That is, these green points that we have over here. Moving them by a certain distance this way. For this move, I'm going to set the distance as about 10. Actually, let's set it to around 20. We can work with this later. And I want a Z direction. Unit Z will be the translation vector. Now we need to also apply a similar randomized component for the same above. For that, I will copy all of these that I have underneath. Control C, Control V will give you a copy of them. Now I'm also going to utilize this to be the translation vector. This time I need to get another move for the elements. Again in the x direction. And you can see that the same movement has been applied to those top set of points as well. I'll be switching the preview off for this and now you can see the two different sets of points that you have for the curves that you can actually draw through them to begin with i'll also change the seed value of the top set of points so that we can get two different sets of curves now we need to find or form the curve between them for this i will go into my curve tab under spline i'll also have my nerves curve The first set of points that I have will be here. Similarly, making a copy of it, the second set of points that I have will be these at the bottom. Once I have these two sets of curves, I can now create surfaces between them by utilizing any surface tool. I'll be utilizing a simple loft. holding down shift to actually add another curve in and you can see that the surface is now being created it's as simple as this guys and now once we change the seed values of the same you'll be able to change the way in which your surface also works keeping one as here and maybe i'll change this to something else you can also change the value of your domain so that it actually changes the entire curve in itself. You can see that the width of the curve on top also changes. Similarly, you can also change the height. Now let's also look at how we can create lines between these. For that, I will turn off the loft. Now we need to divide the entire set of curves that we have, the two sets, the top and the bottom. I will also be switching off my points for now. All right, now I'm getting a divide curve component. The curves that I want to be dividing are these two. The number of division points, let's say around 50. And you can see the different points that are also getting created on your curves. Switching these curves off right now. And you can see just the divided points on the curves. Now it's very simple to form lines between them. Under curl, you can go to a simple line. I will also require two of these divisions to get two sets of points, which is why I will disconnect one of these curves. 
let's create a copy of the same divide component and we'll get this curve in so i have this component for divide as well right now i'll be making a line between the two sets of points a and b you can now see that the lines are also created similarly by simply changing your seed values you'll be able to actually get the dancing lines as well so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe to our youtube channel for more such content